To finish up chapter 8, I want to do a little bit of review with Roman numeral analysis. So let's take a look at this example that we're already talking about. All right. Again, the first thing you want to do is establish the key that you're in. All right. We've got no sharps, no flats. That means we've got two possibilities, C major or A minor. Look at the last chord, and the lowest note of the last chord is C, so therefore we're in C major. Okay. And just put that over here on the lower left-hand corner. All right, now let's look at the first chord. Um, the note that we've got is C, then we've got a G, we've got another C, so we don't have to write that, and then finally we have E. Okay? Now, C, G, E is not a chord, but if you rearrange the letters to C, E, G, then you can see that it's a C major chord. In the key of C major, the C major triad is 1, so we put a Roman numeral 1 right there. Look at the next chord, uh, just working from the bottom. We've got F, then A, then C, and then we've got another F, which we don't have to write. This one's clearly an F major chord, all right? Key of C major, um, an F major chord is the subdominant chord. So we're gonna put a Roman numeral four there. And since it's major, we use an uppercase Roman numeral. Um, continuing on, uh, we've got G. Now in this case, the bass and the tenor share the same note. So both the bass and tenor are G. Continuing up, the alto is B, and then the, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the alto is B, and then the soprano is D. So again, clearly, this is a G major chord. All right? In the key of G, a G major chord is the dominant chord. So we put a Roman numeral 5 right there. Okay, And then finally, at the end, um, the lowest note is C, G, another C, and then finally E. Again, rearrange those letters, and it's a C major chord, so we've got another one chord right there. Okay? So this is the Roman numeral analysis for this piece. Now, um, at the end, you also want to indicate the cadence. Okay? So, 5-1, we learned that that's an authentic cadence. Okay? So we just put that right there. But remember, we have two possibilities for authentic cadences. If the soprano note is the tonic, uh, the soprano note of the last chord is the tonic, then it's a perfect authentic cadence. If the soprano note is any other note, then it's an imperfect. All right. Well, the soprano note is E, so it's not the tonic. That means it's an imperfect authentic cadence, so we just write IAC at the end there. And when you do a Roman numeral analysis, this is what it should look like when it's completed. Key signature, then Roman numerals, and then cadence at the end. All right? So that wraps up chapter eight. So uh, review whatever you need to do, and then we'll get started on chapter nine as soon as you're ready.